welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Snake charming isn't W.K.'s usual line of work, but he's pretty good for a beginner. He might lose some of his enthusiasm with a real snake, though. To see a live snake being charmed, you'd have to travel to an ancient land of mystery and legend, India. It's the home, too, for many of the world's most colorful animals, like W.K.'s cobra. In the northwest province of Rajasthan, in the district of Sawai Madhapur, Indian legend and Indian wildlife cross paths. Here stand the abandoned ruins of the ancient fortress of Rantanbur, dating back to the 13th century. For hundreds of years, legend held the fortress to be impregnable. But now the great warriors are all long gone, and through the once invincible walls have come the wild animals of the surrounding forest, claiming the fortress as their own. The new rulers of the castle within the fort are a family of leopards who have made it their home. This is their story, the Leopards of Sawai Madhapur. Across a quiet lake, high on a towering cliff, stands Ranthambur, stronghold of war. So it is known in India, and so it was through a thousand years of bloodshed. But now a leopard walks unchallenged through the once impregnable gates. Following the paths of once mighty warriors, she passes the courts of forgotten kings and the ancient shrine of Dargah. This is her territory now, and she guards it well, for amid these ruins her cubs wait in hiding. The mother leopard returns to her youngsters from a night of hunting beyond the protecting walls of the fortress. It is late. Already the sun is high. Soon people will come here. Visitors who wander the courtyards. Villagers who worship at the ancient shrines. She travels a high route, alert for the dangers of the day. In the temple of 32 pillars, the leopards make their lair. And waiting there now are two cubs, hungry, lonely, afraid. Never before has their mother been so late. Never before have they been alone when the women of the village entered the fortress. Without their mother for protection, the cubs are frightened as the women pass below, on their way to visit the shrines and take water from the fortress well. But the cubs are unseen in their lofty hiding place. Now, if only their mother would return. She is not far off. From a bastion high above the valley, watching without being watched, she follows the course of a farmer plowing his field. Suspicious. Danger sense the air. A hyena from the surrounding forest enters the ruins. Her cubs are threatened now as he nears their hiding place. He could make short work of them. She moves to head him off. The hyena ignores her warning. With the determination of a mother whose young are threatened, she moves to attack. The cubs are drawn to the noise.
With Mother near, all thoughts of danger are forgotten. And as she moves to a more secluded spot, the kittens follow. For the cubs, it has been a long, hungry morning. And now it's time for breakfast. But Mother wants a closer look at a long, quilled porcupine that has entered the area. He seems more curious than dangerous, and the cubs see no reason for delay. The presence of the intruder has the mother leopard uneasy. While no real threat, porcupines are always a hazard when playful kittens are about. But for the moment, the cubs are interested in just one thing. Now four months old and growing fast, the young male and female have enormous appetites. Mother supplies the food now, but soon the kittens will perfect their hunting skills and find their own food in the forest near their fortress home. For the present, mother offers both nourishment and protection. And while the kittens nurse, she keeps a wary eye on the porcupine. In his blundering way, the porcupine manages to upset the tranquility of feeding time. The mother can no longer tolerate the nearness of the reckless intruder. But the cubs don't share her annoyance. Now she means business, and the porcupine retreats. Once again, the cubs are secure in their fortress home. As the mother leopard leads her cubs through the fortress grounds, they meet more animals, and their education now begins in earnest. Beyond the temple of 32 pillars, many animals live within the fortress walls. Though new to the cubs, the sloth bear has occupied Ranthambur as long as the mother leopard. She knows the bear is no threat to her curious youngsters. Still, she is careful to keep it at a distance. Cautiously, she scans the fortress grounds for any signs of villagers still worshipping here. But the people have gone. Only the sloth bear and her yearling cub occupy the courtyard near the temple foundation. The bears have spent the morning taking honey from the nests of the large rock bees. And now it's playtime. But a sweet tooth lures the young bear back to the honeycombs. The heat of the day is increasing, and the mother is eager to seek shelter in the nearby ruins. They'll return this evening to finish the honey. With the bears gone, the mother leopard relaxes her vigilance to romp with the young male in the fortress grounds. The female cub is attracted by a movement. A tortoise crawls into a clearing. She decides it's worth investigating, though her bold brother still wants to tussle. As the female probes the mystery of this slow-moving reptile, her brother, in rough and tumble play, displays the aggressive streak that goes with being a male. The female's curiosity is quickly frustrated as she learns there is no way to pry open a tortoise that's locked in its shell. 
The young male cannot resist the urge to explore the open courtyard, and his sister follows. In the courtyard ahead, a deadly intruder waits, an Indian cobra. Hood flared, poised to strike, it watches the kitten's approach. In the hair-raising game of tag, the young leopard's lightning speed proves more than a match for the slow striking cobra. Only if the snake gets a firm bite can it inject the deadly venom. And the cub is both too big and too quick to let the cobra make use of its fangs. kill the snake, but she knows the cub's instant reflexes will keep it from harm. Like all cold-blooded animals, the snake lacks endurance, and the quickness of the persistent cubs soon wears it down. With the contest over, the male quickly loses interest, but the female strikes a few parting blows. A civet who has his own share of curiosity, has come to investigate and finds himself face to face with the small but aggressive male leopard. The civet's musk glands give him a bad taste, as the leopard quickly discovers. But the leopard has one more lesson to learn. Besides its skunk-like defense, the civet can also fight. Only a narrow escape finally convinces the cub that civets are best left to themselves. As the young leopard moves to rejoin his family, a wayward jungle fowl crosses his path. It looks like easy prey even for a cub. Fowl, in molting now, can't make full use of its wings. Even so, this wild cousin of a barnyard rooster who has wandered in from the jungle is agile enough to stay barely out of reach. Though frustrated by the animals of the courtyard, the cub learns a valuable lesson. Stealth, not boldness, is the way of the hunter. The young leopards have already had many adventures within their fortress home, but now it is time to explore the world outside. With their mother to guide them, the young cubs have become familiar with their fortress home and the animals who live in it.
Now it is time to pass through the great gate of Ranthambur and learn about the many wonders of the land beyond the walls. Here the mother will begin teaching her cubs the vital skills they will need to survive. Hunting is their heritage, but their prey will be cautious and crafty. Instinct alone is not enough. They must develop the deadly skills of the predator. Even a frog is enough to trigger the cub's natural desire for the chase. But lacking experience, they allow the frog to escape. The cubs find it difficult to take training seriously. They let mother worry about the hunting. Right now, wrestling is more fun. The tactics the young leopards learn in mock combat may someday be valuable when there's need for real fighting. Now the mother leopard moves down to a large pond, a favorite hunting ground. And the curious cubs quickly follow. Game from miles around comes here for water. A herd of wild pigs feed by the edge of the pond. One splashes through the weed-choked shallows after frogs. The leopards haven't been seen. An oversight that could be fatal. The pigs are unaware that predators are closing in. The fidgeting cubs alert the herd. A straggler becomes the target. In a few strides, the leopard is upon it. She grabs for the neck and a fatal hold. Death is swift. Her display of stealth and speed shows the cubs how leopards hunt. But as the young cats eagerly inspect the kill, the mother becomes aware of a visitor, a jackal, hoping for some scraps as followed the hunting leopards. Now the aggressive young male, excited by the chase, claims the kill for himself. Kinships are forgotten over what for the male is a more important matter, establishing his authority and the right to rule the forest one day. The battle over, his fury quickly passes, and once again he is just a cub in need of his mother. The lean and always hungry jackal cautiously edges its way to the abandoned kill. Encouraged by the scavenger's bold example, a second jackal approaches. But this one is not so reckless. The leopards are still too near. The danger is too great. The young male returns to claim the kill. His challenge is ignored. Mother watches tensely. But the young cub doesn't wait for her help. The 
young cub overpowers the jackal, but he lacks the experience to kill it. Now the other jackal sees its chance. The jackal escapes, and now its partner is the focus of attention. The jackals are driven off, and the young male returns to his family full of the pride of victory. The leopard cubs have learned much today. In time, the cubs will leave their fortress home, but the village women will continue to visit the shrines. And the farmer will plow his fields in the valley below. And a leopard will continue to rule within the ancient walls of Ranthambur. As the young leopards continued to grow, they became more skillful hunters. Here they live free from the interference of man and in a land that honors its ancient traditions and customs. Still another proud heritage is protected as man lives in harmony with the most ancient kingdom of all, the Wild Kingdom.